Okay, so um, my name's Claire and um, I have two, two hats really. So Venue Queen is usually venue finding, not a lot of that happening at the moment. Um, and Venue Consultancy, not a lot of that happening at the moment. Um, and Borrow My Garden, and that is going phenomenally well with the fact that um, outdoor space is, is perceived to be the best place to be at the moment. Um, although obviously following tier guidelines. Hold on a minute. So um, what we want to look at is um, knowing and understanding your marketplace. So we all know and understood our business inside out, back to front before March 2020. Since March 2020, we've all been trying to work out where we're sitting and how, it, how it's working. But we want to, to move forward. We need to understand where our business is coming from now. Who's looking at us now? What are people looking for? We need to be out there. And the best way of us being out there is on the internet because we're all sat there and we're all working from screens. So without a shadow of a doubt, everybody now is on social media, which is absolutely brilliant. We're all out there, we're posting, we're putting things out there, but are you looking at what that social media is doing? Are you looking at the analytics? Are you looking at the posts that are getting seen? The ones that nobody's interested in and then looking at why there's certain posts that you put out that doesn't matter sort of what time you post it will get lots and lots of hits lots and lots of feedback there's others that you put out there that you don't get anything at all on I know on Venue Queen I could have posted um, all sorts of bits and pieces about venues and about where we'd been and then I could post one about our security dog being fast asleep in its basket and I'd get loads of hits. So uh, not really what I was looking for, but actually it helps with the traction. Everybody on your website should have Google Analytics set up. Um, Google Analytics, if you haven't got it set up, it's free to do. It's actually fairly simple and you don't need to understand all of it. There are key elements that you understand we are frequently looking at how many visitors we have, how many page views we have, where people are going. Is that linked into the social media campaigns that we've been doing? Is it totally irrelevant? Is it with something that's going on nationally? Is it something that's going on locally? What's happening? Um, it's absolutely vital that you learn and understand where your business is coming from. For me, the key element on Google Analytics is the referring sites, which sites are actually referring people to your website. And from that, we can then pick up where people are going to and what they're looking at. And that's what we need to understand. We need the new patterns. Everything is changed. We almost need to park what we did pre-March 2020 and look at it at the new business for what we're currently doing. And then look at your inquiries. What inquiries are coming in now? I mean, we look after a couple of venues and we are seeing the wedding inquiries coming in. Most of them are for 2022 or beyond, but some of them are, I just want to get married and I want to get married now. Um, so we all obviously need to follow the tier guidelines, but actually have you got information in place to send out on your micro weddings? We don't know what we're going to be allowed post the 22nd of February. He has said weddings can come back after Easter, but he hasn't said in what format. So if we look at what we've done previously, we have been allowed weddings of 15, we have been allowed weddings of 30. Have you got micro packages out there that people can pick up off your website, can see what you're doing? It's all about being visible and giving people what they want at the moment in bite-sized chunks. And then obviously we need to be looking at dates that we're going to be allowed to do things. But there's no harm provisionally holding bits and pieces for couples and talking to them. Have a look at your diary. What's your business on the books like? Are we gonna be able to deliver that business on the books? Um, but the other diary you need to be looking at is what appointments have you got in? You still need to be out there. You still need to be seen. Now we worked on a uh, mind map. So we've got our business, the hotel in the middle, and then we've got all the different segments that then come off that business. Again, what are we allowed to do within the tier that you're going to be in within all those segments and how do we get that? 
out to the marketplace. Now, it could be that your restaurant, if we go back to the guidelines that we were on before, um, if you had a 100 seater restaurant, you're now only allowed to seat 30 people. So how do you make that up? Can you do takeaways? It's not about bums on seats. It's about pennies in the till. Can you can you get that information out to people? Can you tell people that, you know, you can still come and you can still have your really nice dinner and actually you can take it away and you can have it at home if you don't want to eat in. There's no reason why everybody can't be doing that. We know we can't seat them in a restaurant. Your social events, your weddings, make sure you've got your micro weddings out there. Your meetings, we know if we go back to our being allowed to do what we were doing before, maximum 30. So have you looked at the hybrid option? What can you do? Have you got the information out there on your website saying what's safe to do? If you've got grounds, have you looked at what you can be doing in your grounds? Can you extend your restaurant to be pop-up restaurant outside as well? Some of these things you will need to make sure you've got the right licenses for. And speak to your council. The council are bending over backwards at the moment to try and make sure that your businesses work because they need to keep the economy going. But it's all about looking at your business. Imagine walking through your front door now for the first time. What can you offer that person that's walking through the door? What can you do here and now? That's what we need to be dealing with. We can keep in all the other bits and pieces that we could do at a later date, but here and now, what can we do? How many of you know what you pay a subscription for? Who are you paying to do what for you? And are you utilizing that? If you've got your Google Analytics set up, you can see on your website from your Google Analytics, which sites are actually coming to you. Who's bringing you business? If people are not saying on your website, once they get to it, that's a whole different ball game. But if you're paying somebody a subscription to get people to your website, they need to be doing so. And you can see that on Google Analytics, that's your proof. You should also be able to go back to your, whoever you're paying and they should be able to give you some analytics of what they're sending you as well. And you know, there, there should be some synergy there. Pick up the phone and speak to these people. You're paying them, you're their customer. You can be working with them. You could be saying to them, what else can I be doing to make sure I get in front of your customers? What else do you need from me? Become a person, don't just become the business. People still need to know the face, know the voice. They need to know that you're there. Have a look around the internet. What are people looking at? Have a look at competitors. Where are you? Where do you sit? What else could you be doing? Why are you not at the top? Now, your website, is it up to date? Does it say what you can currently do now? Now, we're not saying that you shouldn't have pictures like this one and like this one that shows what you can do in a meeting room when it's full, but actually we're not allowed to do that at the moment. So keep that up there because that will come back. But I want, People want to see what they can do when they can do safely. They also want to see that you're, we're good to go from Visit England or from the AA or from the MIA or whoever it might be, it means you've been through the process to say, actually, we're absolutely safe for you to come to. You can feel totally safe because everything that we've been told we need to do, we've already got in place our policies and procedures and here they are, come and look at them. And this is how we're going to do that. It's all about making people feel safe in the environment that you're inviting them into. So you do need to have a COVID-19 section on your website or under your meetings and under your weddings, have your normal wedding package and then have your COVID-19, your micro meetings, your micro weddings. And then monitor what's coming through and what people are looking at. And hopefully as we come out of the pandemic, There'll be less micro meetings and weddings and more of the bigger meetings and weddings. But we all know we're a little way off that. So let's do baby steps. And what can we be doing here and now? We've had all sorts of inquiries come through over the last 10 months through Venue Queen and through Borrow My Garden. Through Borrow My Garden last summer, we actually had somebody asked to come off our site 
because they were getting too many inquiries and they couldn't handle them all. Um, absolutely flabbergasted, really, coming from a sales background, um, really. Um, we've also, um, we know of a venue that's been closed since March last year, and we've tried to give them inquiries, and there is somebody there answering emails at the end of the phone, but every time we give them an inquiry, they just turn it down. But then we see they're on social media and they're saying, if you, you know, if you're out there and you're not using us, then we're perhaps not going to be here when this is all over. We really need you to be there. We're trying. We at least need you to listen to the inquiry. You might not be able to accommodate it and the event might not go ahead. But if you're getting an inquiry, it needs to be dealt with. Um, we also then get calls to say, we're only getting um, inquiries about our outside field and that's not what we normally do. Well, we're not in normal times, so we need to look at our business and what can we be doing now. We are speaking to a number of GMs. We are speaking to a number of people in a head of sales position that are now saying the business that we would absolutely have turned down previously, we absolutely want now. So anything you've got will absolutely talk to you and will take anything. Those are the generally the venues that we go back to. Um, but so many people not answering the phone and not answering emails. It's all about your business on the books for you to survive when we come out of this. And once we go into different tiers, we will be allowed to deliver something. And that's what we've got to keep going on. So think outside the box. What can you offer that you wouldn't normally in any other circumstances offer? But actually, if you're sitting empty, you've got a perishable commodity. If you don't sell it once tonight, you can't sell it twice tomorrow. So what can you do? What can you offer? Look at your tiers. What are you allowed to do in the specific tier that you're in? And maybe you need to have a game plan for the different tiers so that as you go into different tiers, you know what you can offer you know what you can do when you can do safely. And some venues have stayed open. They've stayed open for takeaways and have allowed people to come in and walk around their gardens and buy a coffee or buy a piece of cake as long as they take it away. What else can you do to bring revenue through the door? We've had um, a panto theatre company, children's one, that want to tour around the UK and they want to do outside performances. And in some places they've gone to, um, they've gone in a farmer's field because they need to be outside. In venues that we've taken it to, actually it's gonna be working on a shared commission basis. So it's not worth a huge amount of money, but they're not allowed to bring picnics. They're not allowed to bring drinks. The minimum they can run with is 50 people. So you've now got the F and B for 50 people that you wouldn't have before. They are paying you a profit share. So look at it as a marketing exercise. They're doing all the marketing and they're actually paying you to do a marketing exercise for you. In normal circumstances, you probably wouldn't take it, but now absolutely, why would you not take that piece of business? Look at things differently. Everybody's pounds and pence needs to be coming our way if that's what they're looking for. And then how do we take it to market? And that's a whole new demographic of client. They're going to do the advertising for it. All you need to do is share it out on social media. If you can put it on your website, that's even better. And actually it shows you're then supporting the community and it's bringing a different sort of demographic into your grounds that potentially wouldn't have been there before. Hybrid events. So as a non-technical person and a person that's used to, have you got an LCD projector and screen? Um, hybrid events just fill me with a little bit of fear and don't really understand how it all works, which I imagine is how a lot of people in venues are feeling. But if you think of it is if it goes back and you're allowed to have 30 people in a, in a meeting room that's large enough to do it socially distanced, you've then got a day delegate for 30 people. You can have the speakers and the facilitators on site with all the AV kit. And you could have, say, 970 people to bring your meeting up to 1,000 people, it being live streamed to. And you can get commission of the hybrid company as well. So you're potentially going to get commission off a thousand people, so a virtual day delegate rate. Sounds great. Um, but do you know what it looks like? How do you sell it in? You know if somebody's coming into your site, you're going to do a site visit with them, you're going to walk everything through, where you're going to have lunch, where their main meeting room is going to be, where the green room is going to be, where the syndicate rooms are going to be. Potentially, you still have to do that, but you also need to be able to do that in a virtual way as well. So you need to understand how it works. 
Now there is plenty of people out there offering the hybrid facility. There's plenty of AV companies out there offering that. So you need to make sure that with an AV company that you've got as a preferred supplier, you've also got hybrid event suppliers as preferred suppliers and that you understand how it works and what it looks like. So you can talk those people through it as well. It shouldn't be that scary. And once you've seen it, it tends to be less scary, but it is app based usually um, so that people can do polls and they can be interactive and they can move into different rooms. Um, we have seen it. It's not as scary as I originally thought it was to start with, um, but we have got a, a, a hybrid event company coming on next week for you, uh, two weeks time for you to see explore as well so it hopefully makes a little bit more sense now who has outdoor space if you have any form of outdoor space we want to speak to your borough garden because we have all sorts of inquiries coming in for outdoor space so yes you can do your own picnic in the parks you can do your own pop-up restaurants but tp weddings and even small tp weddings for this year outside space is still perceived to be safer than indoor space um, so if you can put a TP up, it might be a way of you earning sort of more weddings for this year in a different environment. Just consider it as a new revenue stream that you can put on your spreadsheet, Robin. Nice new line. Um, we've also been working with some external escape room experiences um, and, and they're looking to sort of partner up with venues. And again, it's on a profit share, but you get all the F&B out of it and they've done all the marketing for you. So we've got lots of different things coming through um, and we understand that staycations and campings probably isn't the right place for hotels, but it might be for other venues and it might be for um, farmers. Um, and we know of farmers last year in their fields that would normally be doing weddings in huge marquees that started letting their fields per family so that they weren't having shared facilities with anybody and all they got was a field and an outside toilet that was delivered each week. So people are wanting to stay safe and stay within their own group. Now there's also plenty of people out there wanting to support venues. So Search for Venues are offering a free standard listing on their site. Who wouldn't take that up if you're not on there already? Um, I know Karen's on the call today, so Karen, I don't know if you want to put contact details in the chat box about uh, who they're best to contact to sort of take you up on that offer. But the whole idea is that during this time, Karen can prove that her search platform is absolutely great. And as we go on, you're going to want to enhance that listing. And so everybody's business grows. It's, it's a win-win for everybody. Cool Events Guide is another one that's offering a free listing on their website and there are others but have a look round and talk to people. Everybody out there that's, that's not within the venue wants to help the venue so we're all trying to do different bits and pieces to help everybody out. It's all about collaborating and we are all stronger if we work together. Now, corporates and agents, we all know are vital, we all love them. Um, but when was the last time you picked up the phone and spoke to them? Now, we know there's a lot of corporates and we know there's a lot of agents that either are on furlough or not about. But actually pick up the phone and speak to these people, drop them an email. I had the most randomest of email the other week about somebody saying they needed to go out and buy a new pair of jeans just on the basis they couldn't get the jeans on anymore. And it just made my day because rather than it being, well, I can't do this and I can't do that, actually, it's just, it's just normal chit chat that actually, if I'd been on the phone to her, I'd have had that conversation. And it's and just about how we then move forward. And she said, you know, I can't wait till we can get back to giving you inquiries and we can get back out there and going back to our live events. And that's all it was about really, is just keeping up that connection. But the bit that you're probably not used to doing quite so much is working and looking at your local community. What can you be doing for your local people and how do you get it out there? There's obviously all those platforms on Facebook and Twitter and all those bits and pieces. Your local community tends to be the Facebook ones. 
but speak to people, speak to charities, speak to everybody else. If you can be doing something, your community is going to be the first people back through your door. Probably not your corporates and your agents so much in your immediate. It's definitely going to be that community, your F and B, the people wanting to do something for a special occasion. So do embrace everybody that's there.